a mandolin bottoms and I'm very excited to be the mezzo soprano soloist on 50 trillion molecular geniuses by the brothers Balliet. I'll be performing it with the Cecilia chorus of New York on May 3rd at Carnegie Hall. The role is very scientific in that the way she describes the brain in certain ways, we are forced to question our existence, we're forced to question our everyday functions. Are they our choice? Is it our brain governing our actions and our emotions and everything we encounter within the world? The drama in the piece lies very much in the unexpected textures of the music and the unexpected words that flow out. The things that are said are things we never would think about on a daily basis. We don't consider maybe a small energetic part of us actually allows us to breathe and to love and to smell. We, we get so caught up in rushing through the day and thinking we have a sense of control when indeed our own bodies are governed by something within us. We indeed are not the sole captains of our ship. Uh, Jill Taylor's words that have been set to the music she discusses the sectors of the mind, the right side and the left side, and how they function. And in the right side, she says, we are all connected by energy. We are all one, we are a whole. And then the left side functions more as an analog, a zero and a one, a black and white sector. And so in that way, are we only our minds? Are we only existing within our own brains? Or are we part of a greater system? In the course of four hours, I watched my brain completely deteriorate. How, how does one watch their brain deteriorate? How does one step outside of their body and see themselves existing but not being in control of that existence? So within 50 trillion molecular geniuses, there are about 49 million moments of tragedy and fear for us as the audience trying to figure out if Dr. Taylor will make it through her journey. But there are moments of joy and she's discovering that and we're discovering it with her. So a particular moment is the beginning of the second movement called The Right Brain and I'll give you a little bit of that. What it smells like, what it tastes like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. We are energy beings connected to one another through the And she describes herself as an infant in a woman's body. And we're always striving from youth. We're striving to be a grown up. When I grow up, I want to be like this. I want to be this person. And then when we get to middle age, you know, we still want to pursue our dreams and we're always looking forward. And all of a sudden she's shot into this moment where she is back to being a child and helpless and powerless and dependent on others. And, and we fight that. We fight that so much throughout our lives. As someone with a background in musical theater, I do have a lot of acting facilities that I can dive into and really help tell the story. Now this show is only, or not show, but it is a show. In a way it is. It's with the chorus and the orchestra and the grand stage of Carnegie. It truly will be a show, not just a concert. And in that, it is a very elevated experience. 
And so it's forcing me to dive even further into my acting, even further into my interpretation of text. And there are moments of joy in this piece that will need a beaming smile. And there are moments of tragedy and of fear that will require a different shade of expression. And I'm excited to dig into my bag and pull those out. Mm -hmm.